This is where it all began, 1788. A fleet of sailing ships appeared from over the horizon. These boat people from England believed that when they landed on the beach and raised a colored cloth on a stick, that everything they saw was theirs. The Gadigal people looked on. We'll never know what they were thinking. What we do know is that it will take nearly 200 years before their descendants will have any rights to this land again. Now we go forward in time to 1983 when the New South Wales Parliament enacted the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Rights Act. That was an incredible achievement. Generations had fought the most powerful forces in the land to wrestle back what was rightfully theirs. But this was not the end of the struggle. In fact, it was just the beginning. I want to take this opportunity this morning to extend a warm and sincere welcome to all my Aboriginal brothers and sisters, non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters. Welcome to Gadigal Land. Now, 25 years on, there's a milestone to celebrate. It's both a profound honour and a privilege for me to formally declare open this symbolic and historic 222nd meeting of the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. Bev Manton is the first chairwoman of the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. I was a receptionist at the Tweed Hospital, the Community Health Centre, and um, I'd been working there probably a year or so, and it came across the news and I just cheered with joy. And um, was a short time later, uh, it came out, uh, there were positions advertised, and I applied for one of the positions with the Tweed Bar and Local Aboriginal Land Council. And I won that position, and the rest is history. And now, her passion for improving employment, housing, health and education comes together. There is no question the Aboriginal Land Rights Act has delivered significant and valuable assets to the Land Council network. The implementation of the Aboriginal Land Rights Act changed our lives forever and improved our lives to a certain degree. It was enacted in that parliament, in that, in that gallery that day, so it was only fitting that we seek the opportunity to celebrate the 25th anniversary of land rights in that same room. Land rights was never introduced as a panacea for all of the social, economic and cultural ills of our people. My father's country is south coast Wallaga Lake. A little while back, after many years of struggle, the New South Wales government returned some of our land, the Biamanga and Gulga National Parks. Now the traditional people can carry out their responsibility for country by managing the land they love. We, we are moving forward with our education revolution. We're moving forward with our water and sewage initiative. We're moving forward with a host of other programs. We cannot continue to move beyond those unless our partnerships are truly meaningful. There's just so much energy uh, and synergies within Aboriginal communities, within families and communities that we really haven't tapped into, I think. And there's just so many, uh, just so many opportunities within community to, you know, to be able to... How do we harness the energy there to make sure this stuff's moved forward? And, uh, we get those outcomes that we want. Next to speak at the special parliamentary session was William Murray. We await the outcome of almost 9,000 claims yet are uh, yet to be determined by the Minister. William has spent most of his life out of Canuway fighting for his people. It's a great pleasure to be here today among my fellow councillors and many distinguished guests both black and white. 
Steve Gordon represents the Brewarna area. He's been fighting the good fight for more than 30 years. There's not much Steve hasn't seen. I want to thank you, thank you by reminding you of the Frank Walker when he said, when he, when he, when he stood here 25 years ago to introduce this legislation, he told Parliament how people were virtually at the bottom of every social indicator of prosperity and, and well-being. Sadly, that has not changed. We are still dying younger. We are still suffering from bad housing, poor health, poor education. This is what's holding us down. This story of our people has been a hard one these last 200 years. Whether you live in Redfern or Blacktown or out west in Walgett, like my wife's people, it's still hard today. Even things as basic as safe drinking water and proper sewerage, which are taken for granted by most Australians. These are a real problem for a lot of my people. The Land Council has made a major commitment to changing all of this. Well, closing the gap for me is that uh, the Yoon people from La Perouse all the way down to uh, the um, Victorian border get a fair go on uh, everything that's happening. I am 64 years old, a Ewing man from the south coast. Statistics uh, suggest I should not be here. Right? I'm sure it wouldn't surprise any of you to hear most of my school friends I grew up with uh, have now gone. I'd like to see um, more things happening around our lands councils, like as far as the water and sewage, which we've... Um, already put funding into uh, with the uh, government uh, to give them the opportunity to upgrade their health. Knowing who you are starts with knowing where you were born. I was born on the banks of the Murray, near Ichuka, Kamragunja to be precise. It's my mother's country, Yorta Yorta land. It may seem odd to Australians in the 21st century that someone could be born under a tree beside a river. But it happened to me. And it means that I know my country and I feel really connected. The connection with the land has never left me, no matter where I've travelled. It's the same for my brothers and sisters across New South Wales and Australia. What I hope can happen in the future is that we uh, we just uh, continue to be in existence in this country care